Well, good evening, folks. It's The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, here on the 19th of August here. Um, got about 400 fo new folks on YouTube and uh, several new clients here, so I thought we'd... Why do you say The Real Captain Kirk? Um, again, dating myself, but some 34 years ago, had a nice walk with this then not-so-famous general, uh, General Stormin Norman Schwarzkopf, and uh, forever changed how we think, uh, how I think as a scientist, so using... Give me an answer. Don't change your mind once you give me a forecast. And uh, oh, by the way, I do that many, many months, year ahead. Uh, so statistical math, trillions and trillions and trillions of calculations for 24 climate cycles uh, is, again, how we project the weather a year ahead today. So I had to pretty much data dump everything from Rutgers and physics and fluid dynamics, so very different than traditional meteorology. Uh, again, this is just our example of our year ahead. So this is the Christmas week prior. Um, you don't like hot, you're not going to like the, the forecast here for at least the Christmas week. But uh, good news is, again, it's uh, not it's just one week. Uh, a lot of uh, cold and snow here this winter. Clients don't really care about that uh, weather outlook. Again, they need more specific here. Again, uh, how this specifically will influence their seasonal category sales. So we do this uh, to thousands and thousands of categories here. But some simple ones here, again. So we call this our power of one degree technology. Every degree uh, colder, there's a lift in cold seasonal sales around Christmas time in the winter. Um, obviously, we're talking warmer here for Christmas. So Christmas week prior, we're saying 13 degrees hotter than last year's coldest in 22 years. So just epic cold last year. Seasonal sales went through the roof last year. Not the case this year. We don't uh, don't believe so. Electric bedding sales, again, you plow that 13 degrees. Uh, bedding sales typically move at about 24% per degree colder. So there's a huge lift. for They're one of the most volatile categories, uh, electric bedding. But um, way down this year, uh, down 70%. Uh, women's outerwear, they move about five degrees every degree colder, but if it's warmer, obviously a downside risk. So double digit declines here for many of these seasonal categories. So um, bad news on that front again, but um, really not that bad news because we actually do believe, uh, if we look at our energy bill calculator for you as a consumer, um, we have a cold winter, cold fall, late fall winter uh, for sure, uh, at least for the Eastern half of the country and wintry for sure, if you like snow as well. Uh, so this is just kind of our year ahead calculator for you as a consumer. If we look at January, we've got it uh, quite a bit colder than last year, and uh, that means 30% increase in your heating bill. Unfortunately, when you got a store that might have thousands and thousands of stores across the country, this is uh, millions or hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, higher cost uh, this winter. For you as a consumer, do the math, 30% higher just on your consumption. Um, certainly a negative if you live in the Great Lakes Northeast East uh, for this winter's heating bill. You know, just some of the folks that we work with, again, call them our year-ahead savvy clients, again, that uh, are proactive and not reactive with the year-ahead weather and how it'll specifically influence uh, their seasonal sales. So, again, pretty good at that. Been doing that for 22 years. So the outputs of what we do are designed to help folks plan inventory, allocation, marketing, advertising. Again, very different uh, use of weather than what you might see on TUE here. So, again, more math and statistic-based. Let's get into the uh, forecast here for the thing. A lot of big things uh, going on right now. And... Um, one of the factors, one of the climate cycles is one of many that we would look at um, is a strong El Nino. Uh, it's very important. Everyone will say El Nino is the same, means the same thing for weather. That's not true. Is it strong, emerging, decaying, weakening, year two, year one? You know, got to factor in all those things when you look at these climate cycles. Uh, but you can see the equatorial Pacific is very warm there. Um, Atlantic is blistering hot as well. So what this means is, uh, again, uh, very uh, active uh, hurricane potential here. We have not seen the actual uh, shearing effect if you get with an El Nino. Uh, so we're seeing a very active uh, uh, eastern Pacific. And uh, we're also seeing a very active here Atlantic peaking right now. So we're starting to get a lot of activity. So not trending a typical El Nino is why I say you got to be careful. You know, you'd say El Nino suppressed the hurricane season, and that's not the case here. Also, we got to be worried about nor'easters here this winter. Again, this... Um, Cold air hits that really warm water. Um, even though it's a couple degrees, a few degrees hotter than last year, uh, that's enough to make for some big nor'easters this year. Now, long term, we do believe this El Nino is going to collapse through the winter. Um, we have subsurface cold water just below the uh, surface a few hundred uh, meters down. Uh, so that'll bubble to the surface. And uh, so probably a short-lived uh, El Nino is the, is the theme here, but a strong one for sure. Now, the tropics, again, very unusual. Again, with an El Nino, normally you say the tropics would be dead, but that's not the case. We have five threat areas out there. We may have Franklin here in the central uh, Atlantic there. Uh, got to watch the Gulf again. So a lot of activity there. And then we've got uh, once major hurricane uh, Hillary, as that Cat 4, is actually heading for a very unusual spot in Southern California. So San Diego, Bakersfield, Las Vegas may get some torrential rain here uh, Sunday, Monday this week, uh, again, with the remnants of that system moving in. 
Uh, real quick recap on the world scale here of last week, uh, week ending here tonight, uh, 19 August, around the, around the world. This past week was 1.2 warmer in the U.S., uh, warmest in seven years, sixth warmest in 38 years, so a warmer week um, for the U.S. overall. 2% wetter than last year, 19th driest in 38 years, so kind of in the middle of the pack, um, near average uh, for the nation as a whole. But again, you can see it was a uh, big map here is, again, trends versus last year, how retail customers like to look at the weather. Uh, maps inset left down there are the trends versus average. So cool in the Great Lakes, Midwest, uh, interior northeast. Um, we look at the hot spots, real hot spots was uh, Canada, again, fourth warmest in 38 years, even though it was a tad cooler than last year. Um, Europe, number one hottest, uh, India. I think they were also um, second hottest. Uh, so again, some really hot spots here across the world. We look at the, uh, again, now again, a lot of be careful here because, you know, do you think it's, oh, it's been a really scorching hot summer? Well, not really. If we look at all the data and this is just taking all the 90 degree hot, 90 degree days uh, across the U.S. here year to date, we're actually trending down. We've had 9,000 90 degree days for many major metropolitan areas. Um, this is 260 major U.S. locations. We're actually down 19% versus last year's record. Um, near term, at least 38 year record. So down about 19%, still 13% above average for hot days, but at least in four years. So again, uh, headline news would make you think we're um, setting all time record shattering conditions, and that's just not the case. Summer 2020 23, that map down there shows you this is one June through today. Again, really cool, below normal actually in parts of the Rockies, the uh, Great Lakes, uh, Ohio Valley, even the East Coast here. So hot, of course, across the South Central Florida, Texas, where it's been baking in the Pacific Northwest. Looking at last year, 2022 to date, again, pretty much the whole country was a normal to above normal. So it was a near record hot, obviously, summer last year. We look at tornado count here today. We're still trending up here. We picked up 35 more this past week. Um, we projected this actually to be the most in four years. It's the most in four years. We're 21% above last year and 13% above average. Um, this will uh, con continue as we get some tropical threats here. So we've got to be worried about this for the late summer, fall season as well. Uh, this week, again, we're going to bake here. So we're going to pick up some ground here on these hot 90 degree days. Uh, probably won't eclipse last year for sure. But um, again, we're going to definitely make up some ground here with the U.S. trending uh, 3.5 warmer than last year. Number one hottest in 38 years here for this last week of August. Um, Central U.S. will be baking for sure. Rain cooled air there in California, Nevada and uh, Northeast. Again, we're really not getting it. This heat wave um, just doesn't quite make it here. So we'll be... Uh, Normal to even slightly below normal here in the in the Northeast. Rainfall way down, 74% drier than last year. Um, don't tell folks that in California where they could just get massive uh, quick flooding here. Again, uh, across Southern California into uh, Nevada. If we look at next week, again, back to school here. For a lot of effects, back to school's already started in many areas across the country, but uh, not looking good. They like it cold and wet, and that uh, typically leads to higher back to school sales. Just not the case. Um, a little bit cooler than last year, 0.4 cooler than last year, but still fourth hottest in 38 years, so much above average. But again, look at the Great Lakes Northeast, cool. We're just not getting that hot summer for sure, and that's why there's a ton of air conditioning uh, inventory and sun care and certain hot seasonal categories just um, have not done well this year. Uh, again, because of much cooler here in the lakes and Northeast. Rainfall again, we'll see if it's this dry. It seems a little bit underdone here, but uh, got to watch the East Coast here with these tropical threats, so we'll see... Uh, Really anywhere, Florida, Gulf, uh, Northeast Gulf, uh, East Coast, need to watch the tropics. Again, we're getting to the peak of the season here. So definitely keep an eye on that because uh, things could actually, with as hot as these waters are, they could just explode with uh, a day's notice um, like we had with uh, Ian last year. So just rapid development and um, not leaving much time for uh, preparation. So get, now's a good time to get ready for the tropics for sure. And if we just aggregate these World Two Week Outlook trends here through to September here, cool sponsor again, or this map now is trends versus average for the two-week period. Um, cool central eastern Canada, northeast Great Lakes, a hot spot there in the central U.S. will shift south. They'll even cool off here next week. Europe still stays uh, warm, not quite as warm as they've been. Um, if there's a cool spot, it's in Argentina and western Russia and northeast Siberia. Uh, map inset left is uh, rainfall trends. So with that, folks, again, hope you have a better understanding here of what we do and how we try to help uh, you as in these uh, update videos that we do and uh, Facebook, uh, but also help uh, big retail suppliers. So, folks, have a great week, and we will talk to you this time next week. Mm -hmm.